I'm going to introduce some features in Mastercam 2020 regarding cutter compensation and how to enter and exit the part to allow for the compensation to be turned on and off. I'll go ahead and explain. I got the machine group selected and the machine group properties defined where I have stock around my part. The only place I have excess material is on the left side and right side. I put an extra one-eighth of an inch of material there just so I could trim the ends and uh, maintain an overall length there along the x-axis of seven inches. The stock is seven and a quarter at this point in time. So what I'll do is I'll do a simple 2D contour toolpath, and I'm going to use the solid chaining, and I'll pick an edge. So what I like to do is I like to pick the edge that's at the bottom of the part or the depth I want to cut to and chain direction is very important when we're selecting this geometry because on the metal I want a climb cut so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain this so that I'm climb cutting so this edge has uh, two endpoints and a theoretical midpoint here and uh, if I want to select the direction to feed from the front toward the back I just pick this edge in between the start point and the midpoint so Here's my click. I see he starts here and ends there. That's that's plenty good. This is an open chain of entities. It's a single entity. That's just fine. I'll tell it okay. That's all I want to machine for now. And here I'm just going to come down my list. I'm not going to go into the detail of all the features here, but I'll kind of explain the compensation for you. The tool we're going to use is a half inch bull mill, bull mill with a 132nd radius. Cut parameters is where we have our, our cutter compensation types here in this drop down menu so we've got computer control where reverse where and off are our options here i kind of explain our compensation type and and what happens with that compensation type uh, with it set to computer mastercam compensates the code for the diameter tool we pick so basically with our with our half inch diameter tool it's offset the tool path the center of the tool is, is offset a quarter of an inch away from the physical edge we selected. In this case, Mastercam does not output compensation codes. So whatever you put in for the diameter offset registry at the machine, we're not going to output it or look at it. Mastercam uh, doesn't, doesn't use compensation when we, we're letting the computer, we're letting the PC, we're letting Mastercam take care of the tool, the cutter path. With the uh, compensation type set to control, Mastercam does not compensate for the diameter of the tool, and it does output compensation codes. What you can do with the control type is Mastercam does not compensate for the diameter of the tool, so the cut path that it generates is programmed for the center of the tool to follow the geometry pick we pick. Mastercam outputs the cutter compensation codes so the math coprocessor on the CNC machine can recalculate the toolpath we send it. This is uh, it's necessary for the operator to enter the radius or the diameter of the cutter in the uh, tool offset registry page on the CNC controller. That's what control means. The CNC controller is going to take care of it. With it set to where, it kind of does both here. It does output uh, well, it does compensate for the diameter of the tool, and it does output the cutter compensation codes. What we'll do is, if you don't have a real tight tolerance, um, you know, you're not you're not down there in a couple of thousandths worth of tolerance for the feature size, we can go ahead, let's just say we're roughing the feature out so we can come in and finish it precisely with a different tool path, or I've got a wide open tolerance, like plus or minus 15 thousandths. When that's the case, I would just use cutter compensation because I'm pretty sure I could make the cut intolerance without having to uh, make any changes to the feature size. With it set to controller wear, these two were, or reverse wear, were able to correct the feature at the machine by offsetting the tool diameter. With it set to control, the value entered into the, the uh, registry for the tool diameter or radius is the full diameter or full radius, depending on your machine. With it set to wear, um, just start off with zero, and then we'll check it, and then we'll make our adjustment after we've measured it. Reverse wear is for 
a left-handed tool. So we've got a right-handed tool. Our tool is offset to the left of the geometry. If we have a right-handed, a left-handed cutter, the tool will be to the other side and still climb cutting. So we'll have to change the code here. G41 is compensation to the left and G42 is compensation to the right. Off is uh, neither. It neither compensates for the diameter to the tool, diameter of the tool, and does not output the compensation codes. This is pretty good for scribing letters or putting a, a ID label on a part or heat lot number, part number, stuff like that. It's not really engraving. That's what I would call scribing. I'm going to set this. I'm just going to leave it set to the default computer. I'm going to let Mastercam take care of where the center of the program path is supposed to be based off the cutter I selected. So in the uh, lead in and lead out, there's a couple of different uses for the lead in and lead out. One is we can control how close or how far away we come down before we'll make our cut to enter the part. And the other thing that's necessary when we're using uh, the compensation type wear, reverse wear, or control is we'll need to give it a length of line so that it can pick up cutter compensation. We'll have it to give it a length of line so it can cancel cutter compensation as well. I'm going to go ahead and leave the values here set to what they are by default so we can take a look at it. Um, I've got a line tangent to the arc. Arc is 100% uh, of the diameter of the tool and the, the line is 100% of the diameter tool. The reason for these settings is it's um, with compensation set to control, you'll need to have a line that's long enough to pick up whatever the diameter of that tool is. We're gonna go ahead and segue down here to the linking parameters. And this gets pretty easy if you just leave this set to incremental and zero. The tool path is going to the depth of the edge of the geometry I selected. With that solid edge, I'll make one little change here for the feed plane and tell it okay. So if I toggle my toolpath display on, you can see that the yellow is where I wrap it down or up, and the and the light blue color is where I'm I'm in feed mode. In back plot, I'm gonna take a look at it. So I can see that my, my cutter, we, we're a good long ways away from it. That's kind of wasteful and cutting there, but I'm going to step through the tool path. So he feeds down to, down here in the lower left-hand corner, you can see my X, Y, Z coordinates. So he's he's a good ways off of the part, but he's at the right depth. Let's see, there's where he feeds up to the edge of the part. So he does a straight line move, and then he arcs into it. There's an arc move to kind of sweep into the part. I'm at X minus 250, if you'll notice. X zero is where the edge of my part is, so the tool path has been offset out half the diameter of the tool. So I'm gonna step through there. We'll do an arc move to exit, and then a straight line move if we had cutter compensation turned on to cancel cutter compensation. I'll show you a couple of things we can do to control how much air it cuts, maybe eliminate some wasted motion here. So in the parameters of this operation, can go back into my lead in and lead out and we can tighten this up a little bit sometimes just a hundred thousandths is plenty for a length of line hundred thousandths for the radius that tightens that up you know a little bit snugs it up and I'm only going to do 45 degrees worth of arc sweep I'm going to make the exit the same as my entry by clicking on this button here I did notice something when I was regenerating that toolpath and back plotting it looking at my numbers. I need to break through whatever my corner radius is at least. So I might go 50,000, 30, 31 thousandths was the radius on the cutter. We'll break through a little bit. And maybe, you know, just to be thorough, I'll go ahead and turn the MO8 cooling on. Okay, we'll regenerate that so it looks a lot better. Let me uh, take a, a little bit better look at him from the straight up, you know, top view here. And I'll back plot him again. And what I can do is turn the, the visual, I can turn the display of the holder off. So I can see that I'm coming down. I'm not missing him by very much, but that's real close. Anyway, we can see him he plunges down in Z, 100, makes his cut along that edge. And then he kind of blends off of it real nice and neat. 
the code I'm looking at here, I'll go ahead and overwrite and just look at this guy here and see what he's what he's really doing. This is where we tell where he's at. This is the code the machine is going to read. So once we get him output into this NC file, he's pretty much done with the Mastercam. It's independent. Uh, any changes I make here don't go back into Mastercam. It's kind of a, a one-way deal. G1, Z minus 0.8. That's good. He started at X minus 0.35. So he's, he's to the left of the edge of the stock. Comes down to Z quarter inch, Z.1, feeds down to the final you know, cut depth. Then he does a, a, that angled move, 45 degrees work. And then here's my G3. He goes to X minus 250. So that's where his finished pass is. So we should be okay there taking the 125,000 depth cut with the half inch cutter, a little over one and a half times the diameter of the tool deep. That shouldn't be a problem. But nowhere in here do I see uh, a G41 or G42. We have the G43 for the tool length offset, but nothing for the diameter. So we're not even outputting. If you had a diameter in there for, for the cutter, it's not going to read it. If we wanted to compensate for, let's say we had a, you know, maybe a one or two thousandths tolerance on that feature in the cut parameter, you could turn the compensation to where. This is my favorite one to use, either computer or where. Control we hardly use anymore. I'll regenerate that because I made a change and let's repost process that. This is a very important way this outputs. So um, you'll see he's in the G1. He feeds down in Z to the depth he wants to cut to. And then uh, it outputs the G41 offset for the diameter of tool one. So it's in a straight line move and then it picks up cutter comp. If you do it wrong, it could output that cutter compensation in the arc move and it'll alarm the machine out as best i can remember a thermwood rounder will not air out when you do this but every hoss or fanook will then when he he makes his straight line move does an arc move to exit the part then his straight line move after the arc move is a cutter compensation cancel that's good if you look at maybe doing some other things whenever we're just entering on a straight edge like we are um i might want to just not, not really arc in this way or exit with an arc move in a line. That's pretty handy for entering in a, in a cavity, you know, the walls of a pocket. But here we can just adjust by extending the length of the start. We can extend the length of the uh, end or the exit so that that's half the diameter of the tool plus 100. This is a pretty good acceptable way to do that. Gives you a straight line move like it should out in front of the part where he's clear of making contact. I'm going to go ahead and look straight down at this one as well. So I've got a little more daylight there between the edge of my cutter and the edge of the stock. So as I step through here, you can see he does one linear move along the y-axis. This is the move where he picks up the cutter compensation. Then he makes his cut that we need to make sure we're on, you know, in the right place. And then uh, he does another line move to cancel cutter compensation. This is very acceptable. In post-process, this one, we'll see what's different. It's just going to probably wrap it down into location at the X minus 0.25 number. Yep, that's the diameter of the tool away from the finished edge. And everything looks good. I guess now would be a good time for me to show you what the cutter compensation setting control looks like because it's there. This is... Not one I recommend using, but uh, it does the same thing. We just have to enter. Okay, we just have to enter the diameter or radius at the machine now for the offset registry. It says lead in and lead out. Gauss check will not work with the cutter compensation in control, so that option will be turned off automatically. What we're looking at in Mastercam, Mastercam is assuming that we put the diameter of the tool in the offset registry. So it demonstrates right. So you'll see. The light blue code, this is the actual code. The light blue line is where he's programmed to go. He's programmed to go in a straight line, the center of the tool along that edge. The purple is showing the compensated tool path. This is why we can't really see where he's gouging and, and all those things that we, we might need. Um, this is kind of making an assumption in what we see here. When I output code, you'll notice he goes to X0. He takes the center of the tool to the edge. He feeds along the Y axis, minus 4.85 to Y minus 4.5, so 350 thousandths. Now, that machine may alarm out here, because if I have a 500 thousandths diameter tool, and I'm only moving 350 thousandths to pick up that cutter compensation in this line of code, 
that machine will alarm out. I don't have enough room to physically move and pick up that compensation amount. That's why, and you'll get an error and alarm, and then you'll somebody usually will get a phone call about that time. My machine alarmed. Let's go ahead and make this 100% of the diameter of the tool. And now we have enough length to pick up the cutter compensation amount that we're going to need. With that, I'm going to sign off and we'll do a second part to follow up. Thank you and have a great day.